today, I'm Ilse Squidrod for Group Editors Live. The garden route has experienced the first red tide of the year from around 13 January. Although beautiful, the red tide comes with a warning to avoid shellfish during this period, as apparently it might be toxic. Following various social media inquiries in response to news reports on our sites, we've decided to get an expert opinion. With us in the studio is local marine scientist Mark Dixon to answer some of your questions. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. No, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us just exactly, in basic layman's terms, what is a red tide? What causes it? Okay, a red tide is, um, it's got a couple of factors that goes in, but in essence, it's a bloom of dinoflagellates. And okay, that's a big word. Yes, it's a big word. It's a little microorganism and it's in the ocean and due to certain circumstances, so high levels of nutrients, nutrients, um, temperature and salinity, you get this boom uh, or bloom, we, we call it an algal bloom, and they get incredibly high densities. And um, some of them are red and they, and in this case with this one, it's uh, an orangey color. And so you get to see it um, on the surface of the water and they, they'll have a vertical migration. So just as I drove into the studio now, there was nothing in the bay at Wilderness. Oh. Um, and I think it's just the wind and uh, uh, conditions on the surface of the water. Um, but they would have migrated down a little bit and then they'll come up again um, when the conditions are right. And, the, and yeah, it just hangs around um, in the water. Um, but what causes that? Is it sort what of causes pollution? It? Is it um, well, sewage running into the ocean? So there's a, there's a number of different um, causes so and it's and it's quite complicated when especially when you look at this coastline here so we've all just well this section of the coastline has just had a, a big upwelling um earlier so we had an upwelling in december and then we had an upwelling earlier in the month and an upwelling is when we have a strong easterly um and what happens technically when we because we're in the southern hemisphere when you get a strong wind going over um, water it in the southern hemisphere displaces the water perpendicular 90 degrees to the left of the prevailing wind. And because our coastline goes in a east-west alignment, um, it means the surface water gets shunted south mm -hmm. um, and taken away. But you can never have a vacuum in a liquid. So the deeper, colder water comes up. And so you get this dramatic um, temperature drop. And I mean, like the last one we had, it went from 21 degrees Celsius down to, which was on the 24th of December, down to um, some, some places was recorded as low as five degrees Celsius. Sure. So that colder water is nutrient rich, um, just natural nutrients mm. in the ocean in it that comes up and it's, it's there, it has a, a, a period of time um, in the water and then as the temperatures go up, you can get this bloom. Um, and it's given us a algal bloom all the way from Counts that I've got, the, so the furthest north that I've got is um, Storms um, River and all the way down to False Bay. Yeah. So it's an incredibly big one. So what's the cause of it? In this case, it's more than likely the upwelling, but you do have other circumstances that would um, trigger a, a bloom like this. And, and that would be um, agricultural uh, nutrients getting flushed into the ocean and um, and or sewage. So we don't have the major sewage issue here as there are in, in other um, locations in South Africa and, and in the world. But, you know, one thing that one's got to consider is that there's usually after a heavy rainfall period, um, particularly in the garden route, where we've got a lot of blind estuaries, that um, if, those, if we have heavy rain, those estuaries open, which we saw occur um, mm, you know, last place. year yes. and all over the place. And we've had flooding down um, it, towards the Cape and that. So th what happens then is you will get nutrients that are runoff from agricultural lands um, getting flushed out. And those high levels of nutrients can also then trigger a bloom. And then um, it takes oxygen out of the water and that so, kills fish or it could, you know. Yeah, so so there's 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 that component as well. So just because the sheer volume, so this one is more of a slick as opposed to, so some of the other algal blooms or other red tides that we get um, are much more um, 
spread out on the surface. This one's been fascinating, uh, you know, especially looking at it from the air, is, is it's a slick. And it's, it's quite interesting because it's at the convergence zone um, from your nearshore current, um, uh, which is going uh, eastwards compared to the, the major current. So it's just that convergence zone um, of these two currents going past each other, and that seems to be where this, uh, you know, the slick is. So, you know, looking at it from um, uh, aircraft and drones, it's along a line instead of this broad spread out area. Sometimes you can get a, a different species of red tide can cover in, in an entire bay. So if you go, I mean, Plettenberg Bay is, is a classic example, as is this wilderness bay, um, where it just goes for kilometers mm -hmm. and the whole ocean just looks like blood red. This one's a, a bright, it's like someone's taken a highlighter, it's almost this color, mm -hmm. um, and drawn a line, line. line on, the, on the ocean. So this particular, um, a species of dinoflagellate does, doesn't produce a toxin um, that's detrimental to human health. Well, that's what all the literature says. Um, I would just on, err on the side of caution and refrain from um, any particular... So you don't want to eat a dead mollusk? Well, you don't know how long that <laughs> thing's... I mean, trust me, the, I wouldn't want to go and harvest anything yeah. off Herica's Point right now, yes. simply because when I was there yesterday and we were there for about two, three hours snorkeling, um, there was always this ripe smell in the mm, air, and I just mm. thought, well, that, that, that's not, I'm not going to eat that no. type of thing. It's like having, you, you harvest a whole lot of mussels, you left them for two days, forgot about them, and now you want to eat them. Mm. Could and be you touch didn't, and go. after snorkeling there, you didn't experience any irritation or uh, coughing or I've, seizing? I've or... had this nervous touch. <laughs> no, I haven't had anything um, <laughs> uh, terrible, thankfully. And it, it was one of the things, um, if it was one of the other varieties, mm. I probably would have rather decided not to okay. go snorkeling. Right. And um, don't go right into the bloom line. Well, listen, you're in the bloom line. If you're walking along the beach or you're going, oh, okay. going two kilometers out, you're in the bloom line. Okay. Um, where the actual bloom is, is, an, uh, mm. is that's just where it's visible in that high density. And how long do we think this is still going to last? Depends how long the nutrients stay mm. there, but it, it would hopefully, you know, this coastline is very dynamic, um, which is one of the fortunate things. So we should have um, this dissipating within three to five weeks. And then that beautiful blue that we see at night, the blue okay, the, light effect. So the beautiful blue is your digital camera. Okay, it's actually a, a nice sort of a greeny tone. Yeah. So if okay. you've seen a firefly, um, and that little green, that's the yes. color. So that's bioluminescence. So dinoflagellates are actually very interesting in that um, there's a lot in the water and they always go, you can go down even when you're not having a bloom mm. like this. And if you just, especially at new moon and you switch all your torches off and you just look in the in the pools, you're gonna see little flicks. Okay, so, so as soon as they get touched, they will bloom. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's I mean, it's a whole topic, um, but Bioluminescence in the ocean is incredible. So in the dark zone, which is you know down to a thousand meters, there's more light produced there than than um, most people realize and and know about. And so dinoflagellates are are fascinating because as soon as you bump them, they're, they're, the, the the stimulus gets them to produce a flicker of light. Yeah. Mark Dixon, thank you so much for coming in. Really appreciate it, and we can definitely speak to you again. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Group editors have compiled a short video of photos received from our readers where you can see the spectacular nighttime show produced by the Red Tide. Enjoy.